everybody, it's Susie here with a super special mystery guest, Alexis, the affiliate manager from ConvertKit. So I know I told you guys yesterday during the live that we're all working about building our lists and creating opt-ins for the March challenge, which I'm super excited about to see you guys on the private group coaching call. But I figured why not fly in like somebody who's amazing at building lists, who works for a company that builds email lists, so that she can give us the tips to help us grow our email lists and our audiences so that we can reach more people and help more people. So if this is the first time that you guys are here, thank you and welcome. I'm Susie and um, I help mommy start blogs. This is Alexis. She helps moms and creatives grow their email list and reach more people. Yes. So hi, Vicki. Hi, Sasha. Um, now I got Alexis. If you want to tell us a little bit about yeah. yourself mm -hmm. and kind of what your role is, that would yeah. be awesome. Awesome. Well, first off, I'm so glad that you guys are joining us on a Saturday or not Saturday, Friday, Friday afternoon. I don't even know what day it is. I'm so happy to be here with you in Jacksonville and a little bit more about me. I am the affiliate manager at ConvertKit, so I help creators like Susie who have an audience who want to share the importance of email marketing with that audience. And that's why I'm here with, with Susie today, just talking through, you know, what her next couple of months look like and how I can help her and serve her and, and all the things email marketing. And today specifically, we're going to be talking about growing a list and that grind of growing a list can sometimes feel very overwhelming and it can feel like it's taking forever. And we're going to be talking about kind of what goes into that and what a lot of people don't really talk about. Right. So, so everybody's like, oh, create an opt-in, like me, and then your <laughs> list will grow. So yeah. Alexis, what really is the truth about building an email list? What is the juice and the secrets behind it? Are we gonna spill some tea? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna spill some tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I could give you guys, you know, after being in this industry now for five or six years, actually, just watching the ebbs and flows of email marketing and of blogging and of social media specifically. Um, I've just seen some some things that that I think are really important when it comes to building an email list. Because so, you've worked with some really big people. I have, yeah. And you can name drop a little bit, just so that we know who we've worked with before. Yeah, I've worked with people like Melissa Griffin and Pat Flynn and Susie and a lot of our top creators at ConvertKit and just learning more about their businesses and what's working and um, I think that I, I can take some of that and also share it with you guys as you're building up your list because there are some like grassroots ways that you can build your list that aren't really talked about. And they're they're not necessarily seen as, you know, flashy or sexy. Can I say sexy? Yes, you can okay. say sexy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all right with that word. Right. But um, that's still important. And so I think the, the biggest thing I want to tell you guys before we dig into like the three core things is that give yourself permission and allow yourself time yeah. to build an audience. You know, we all have these big dreams and these things that we want to accomplish and money that we want to make to support our families. And in that, that does take time. And that is not a very popular thing to say, yeah. but if you can give yourself three to six months to focus on building an audience and like you say, making friends yeah. so that whenever you're ready to launch that product or write that ebook or whatever that big thing is that you want to do, you actually have people to launch it to. Right. I know that that sounds, you've probably heard Susie talk about that and that sounds so like, yeah, Alexis, we already know that. But I think really giving yourself the space, like yeah. allowing yourself the space and time to really build an audience you're able to build that up so much quicker than trying to build an audience, launch a product, you know, do affiliate marketing, get a podcast, start a YouTube channel. You're starting and doing yeah. all these things at one time and you have all this split focus. So if you can really hone in on building an audience and just doing that and not doing any kind of product building, um, I think that you're able to grow something so much quicker and something that's a lot more sustainable. Yeah. And especially as you're building this business, this is not a flash in the pan. Nope. This you is know, a long-term thing. Yeah, you really want to build something that's sustainable. And so giving yourself that space to build a good foundation for your business and for your blog is honestly the biggest gift that present you can give future you. 
Um, Ooh, I like I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. The present you to future you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm always like, man, what would what would make future me really happy <laughs> that I did today? So okay, if we're gonna dig in and do do a few um, tips, there's like three. Yes. Uh, the three C's. The three C's. <laughs> as we were prepping. Secrets. Yeah. As we were prepping for this live, we were just going through and talking about some of the things that have helped grow my business. Uh, just to give you like a very quick 30 yeah, second what have intro. You done? Yeah. Um, I ran a women's clothing boutique for three years and an e-commerce store. I've hosted a podcast for three years with, you know, over 200,000 downloads. Um, I had a blog, I did travel photography and stock photography, worked with a lot of brands and different tourism boards. And so I've had my hand in a lot of different things. Um, and with that, the biggest thing I've seen that can help grow an audience is not the biggest thing, but one of the biggest is collaboration. And Susie, you and I were talking about this, and it's something that we don't always think about when it comes to growing an audience, but something I did whenever I was building um, my clothing boutique specifically in trying to build an audience there, I partnered with um, complimentary business owners. Super smart. So photographers. Um, I didn't carry jewelry, so I partnered with a jewelry maker. Yeah. And we would promote each other's products and we saw our audiences grow. Right. And then now even now that I'm in like the blogging and podcast space, I will partner with creators that maybe might be a step above me or a step, you know, behind me and we're able to collaborate and promote each other's products. And I've seen my audience grow a lot because of that. And like one specific example could be that let's say I was giving her this example, it's like she lives in Jacksonville and if there was another Jacksonville blogger that maybe you guys talked about complimentary topics. Like yeah. one of you was uh, blogging about healthy foods and maybe the other was talking about, you know, doing workouts from home. Those are very two like in the health space, yeah. but you're blogging about two different topics. What if you were to team up and do a live together or promote each other's products or guest post? And so I think like you mentioned that you were talking about doing little mini masterminds inside of uh, the Facebook group. Yeah. I think that it's really important to reach out and actually collaborate with some of the other creators that are in your space because they have people that probably don't know about you and you have people that probably don't know about them because the, the online world is a big space. So how can you utilize that space and um, instead of reinventing the wheel, you're able to collaborate with people who you know have high quality value or, or products or, or some kind of content that could really help your audience. Yeah. Um, so then you're positioning yourself as kind of the guide and you're bringing in people that you think can help them on their journey, on yep. their journey. But yeah. then also you're able to do that and get in front of someone else's audience as well. So yeah, I love that. That's such a good tip. So you might not have a product, but you can do these collabs with each other's freebies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So instead of whenever we say product, it could be your yeah. freebie is your product. That's your gift that you're giving your audience. So right. you could go to say, for example, I love your example of um, one mommy blogs about fitness, one about healthy meals, and you guys can swap out. Like I have an, a really amazing workout plan. You have amazing meal plan. Right. Let's share each other's freebies or do a live together mm -hmm. or do some kind of collaboration mm -hmm. and then share those audiences. Yeah. Even if they have an audience of 500 and you have an audience of 500, yeah. the overlap there is, is really great because there's probably a lot of people that aren't on your list yet. And then something that we were also talking about is the podcast land. The podcast land is, is blowing up, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know. I consume podcasts every day. I'm always listening to podcasts in the gym or in the car. Um, and so with that, we were talking about um, maybe Susie could be on podcasts. Do you guys listen to podcasts? I do. Yes, Alexis but... <laughs> does. Let me know in the comments if you guys listen to podcasts, say a little yes. Um, yes, I listen to podcasts and what podcasts you listen to, just so that we yeah. know like, Maybe I can pitch to one of those people that they listen to. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I know of a creator who was on over 100 different podcasts as a guest. Wow. Didn't start his own podcast, didn't manage all the back end. He just got on, talked about what he knew and what his, what his offering was and what his skill set was to provide value first and serve first. And then he was able to find a lot of leads from that. That's smart. Um, he didn't have to manage the podcast, book guests or anything. He just found audiences that aligned with his offering. And then he positioned himself in front of that audience. So kind of going back to that collaboration is how can you get in front of audiences in a way that's that's unique 
um, but also in a way that's genuine and that really aligns with with kind of how you see your business growing helping each other so what's the next tip that was the first one yeah the next tip which is um, I'm sure you've heard it before. not popular (laughs) not popular (laughs) and probably not a secret but it's consistency yeah building that email list is a habit it is not something that happens overnight it is on a box that you can check it is something that really happens over time and the ability to show up every day like you're wearing the shirt create every day you know but showing up every single day and making a commitment to building that audience that kind of goes in turn with what i said when i started was giving yourself space and time yeah that really also comes along with building that habit of built you know writing the blog posts um you know figuring out different resources that you want to get in front of your audience if you're an affiliate marketer and so in that same vein building a habit uh, you have to do it every day <laughs> and so I was as we were prepping for this I was talking about the the habit of writing every day or yes. like her says creating every day I think when you think of building an opt-in or building an email course or writing a building post. a freebie or b- writing a blog post um, it, it kind of becomes this very overwhelming thing that looms over your head like a dark cloud and you're like I need to get that done you know that's a box I need to check because I know that once I get this done it can spur off all these other opportunities yeah. But if you don't build up that habit of writing every day, like what if you were to just make a habit of writing 50 words every day? 50 uh, words. Or 100 words Love every it. day. No, just, that's just, good. Just like live, just no, um, no parameters, just even if it's in a journal or typing it out and just writing 50 words a day and getting yourself in that practice of creating and writing something every single day, even if it doesn't have to do with your topic, yeah. but you're building up that stamina and that consistency. And so when you sit down to write a blog post, it comes out easier. Yeah. When you sit down to answer emails, it's something that is, it's flowing in you because you've built up that stamina um, and built up that habit. So for example, maybe you are wanting to start a YouTube channel and you're nervous about, you know, all the things that go into right. going, starting a YouTube channel. Perhaps a great way to do that is to get your phone out and turn to the side and hit record and just start practicing every day for five minutes. Just talk to your phone for five minutes and get in that habit of looking at a screen and get in that habit of just letting free words flow. Yeah. And so then whenever you're ready to start building up that YouTube channel, hitting record isn't as scary. And so like start thinking about the ways that when it comes to an email list, especially writing, it's not as scary to write an email anymore because you've been writing 50 words a day or 100 words a day. Um, there are some authors I follow that started the habit of writing a thousand words a day. That's that's something that I would hope to work up to. Wow. But knowing me, I'm not quite ready for that yet. Right. And so find a habit that feels good with your routine and that feels good with your schedule, um, that feels attainable. Because I think if you start a habit that it's too big, too you're not big. gonna hit it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Small, small baby steps. Yeah. Exactly. And I highly recommend the book, um, James Clear. James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Yeah. It's all about building those small habits that build up into a really sustainable life. And it's, I read it in January and it was a big game changer for me. So shout out to James Clear. Thank you for writing that book. But um, that's a big thing that when it comes to building an audience is you have to be consistent. And if you're going to be consistent, you have to have the habits in place to be able to actually achieve that. Some hard words. Yeah. Yeah. Very (laughs) true. Like very true words, but it's harsh. We have to be consistent in helping. It's just like making a friend in person Mm -hmm. if you're not consistently at least calling them once a week or checking in with them Mm -hmm. that relationship is kind of gonna go but if you're constantly like hey how you doing exactly um when's your birthday or like you should know that can i bring you a gift or something (laughs) um then you're you're building that relationship right one thing that abby um said on um creating like these atomic or small habits Mm -hmm. was just in line with what you just said Mm -hmm. was Sitting down every morning, when you have your morning coffee, mm-hmm. write 50 words yeah. in your journal. It's yeah. something you are already doing. You're already having that morning coffee, so you attach it to a habit you already have, mm-hmm. and then you write your 50 words. Yeah, that's called habit stacking. Habit stacking. Habit There's stacking. a word for that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. However, whatever habit you do every single day, what's a new little mini habit you could stack mm. on top of that? Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, and so the same thing could go with, like, if you're nervous about sending your first email Ooh, and, yes. you know, you don't have a product yet. I saw a comment of, like, if you aren't product building, then what do you have to offer? There's still a lot you have to offer. 
Um, it's your expertise. It's your skills. It's the way that you put together reviews on your favorite products. Like if you're, you know, selling Amazon or you're an, an Amazon affiliate, um, there are, is still value that you can offer, even if you don't have a product to, yeah. to necessarily pitch or, or to build. Um, so start drafting out some emails. And I think there's something about stepping away from technology and getting off of your computer and actually freehand writing. Oh, yeah freehand writing your first email or if you're writing an email course to, to turn into a freebie. Um, actually, one of my friends, I had never even seen this, and, and this might sound so simple, yeah. but she um, was struggling with writing her, her free opt-in, which she was going to do a, a three email course. And so instead of like getting on her computer, she sat on with a notebook and she wrote it all out. Wow. And I was like, whoa. She's like, wow. just seeing my seeing my thoughts down on paper, yeah, not on digital screen was helpful for her. Made it more real. So like, what you know, getting outside of that of that box. So I think that can help you build some better habits. So I am um, walk around Hobby Lobby when mm. I get stuck. So it's like a visual Pinterest. Oh, I love that. Instead of browsing Pinterest for ideas, I go to Hobby Lobby. That's great. And it's like I am inside of Pinterest. <laughs> this is so cool. So yeah, yeah, getting that's, outside of your world. That, yeah, I I agree with that, and I think that giving yourself that space again I've said that so many times but there's always that rush yeah to build the product now to um you know write the book now or write the ebook now or launch it now but if you don't have an email list or you don't have an audience to launch that to that's going to be pretty difficult yeah and so what if you know whenever you're building a product you set aside serious time and you build out the best thing that you have or whenever you're writing a book you set out some serious time to write that out. Same goes for audience building. You yeah. still have to give yourself time and space to, to make that happen. So true. Love that. Thank yeah. you. And then what's your last tip? The last tip is you've got to challenge yourself. you got to challenge yourself. <laughs> yeah. And so that comes in with setting goals. And I think that the consistency and the habits really feed into a goal that you want to set. And so like how, how many email subscribers would you like to have in the next 30 days, the next 60 days, the next 90 days, and writing that out so you have something to work towards. I think it's like, oh, I'm trying to build my list. It's like, okay, well, what what's your milestone? Yeah. What do you consider successful to you? You know, you see someone that might have a list of 5,000, um, but maybe you have a really incredible niche community of 250 subscribers that you can also find very profitable, which we see at ConvertKit a lot. Yeah. A big list does not always mean nope. big profits. So you can still make it a good amount of money from a small list. Yeah. Um, and so with that comes comes challenging yourself to set realistic goals, give yourself milestones, um, and follow people like Susie who host <laughs> monthly challenges, which is really helpful whenever you have that accountability. Um, and we're actually hosting one at ConvertKit. We're hosting a, a ConvertKit landing page challenge. Yes starting April 1st, so mm -hmm. which is perfect. Um, the doors just opened to this. I didn't even know about this. Alexis came down to tell me about it in person. <laughs> it's that special. Yes. So this leads in perfectly with our March challenge, challenge that we're mm -hmm. doing um, of creating that opt-in. Now ConvertKit is having a list building challenge mm -hmm. of creating your first opt-in, creating a landing page, and building your list to 100 or more. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do that, you get like these amazing prizes. So you don't just get a private group coaching call like you do with me because that's kind of what I can afford you can have like you can almost win a thousand five thousand dollars right? yeah 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 so we have different prize tiers Ooh. and like she said over the whole month of April you'll have access to five live trainings that will walk you through how to build a high converting landing page meaning the photos the text the way that you um, promote your opt-in those things matter so we're gonna be talking through that we're also gonna be talking about um, how to build an opt-in so that whenever you're you whenever you're trying to build a list you have to have something enticing for people to want to opt in to yeah so we're gonna be talking about what kind of opt-ins to build kind of very similar to what you did this yeah, but month way more in depth and then also we're gonna talk about um, the building part the, the audience building the promotion of that landing page so that'll happen over the whole month of April and it's free to join it's free which is really exciting. Yes. Um, and then the, the uh, subscriber tiers are 10 subscribers, 25 subscribers, 50 subscribers, and 100 subscribers. So really talking about like just that 
getting up off the yeah. ground and, and building that with that specific uh, landing page. So yeah, it's free to join. Did you drop in the link? I did. I just, okay, she just dropped yeah. in the link. So um, she has her own her own uh, URL, startamomblog.com forward slash convert kit challenge. So that, that, misspell it. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but the link is is in the is in the chat. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really big. We're excited. The different prizes are. We're giving away Amazon gift cards. We're giving away a full year of ConvertKit to a, to like seven different winners. Um, we're giving away a thousand dollars in cash, and then the top prize will be go um, will be going to one person, and they'll win five thousand dollars, a year of ConvertKit, and um, a year of coaching Whoa! with with someone from ConvertKit. That's so awesome! Yeah, we're really excited about it, and yes. it's it's free to join. Like yeah. it's really just to get creators excited about their ideas. In a, in a time window. Like right. I said, like you've got to really challenge yourself and it, it's sometimes hard to do that whenever you're like, oh, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. No, it's a sprint. Yeah. It's a sprint to take some action. Absolutely. And yeah. our landing pages, even if you don't have a website, our landing pages you can you can use and promote to, to your audience if you have a, a small audience on social media or on Pinterest. Um, yeah, so you can you can sign up. It's a, in, in that challenge window too. You can use ConvertKit for free. So yeah. you get a 30-day trial that ends on the last day of the challenge. And so it's a really great way to push yourself. And you can, if you are a ConvertKit user, cause I know that some of your audience does yes. use ConvertKit, um, you can also easily join the challenge if you're a ConvertKit user. I am user. going to. Yeah. Because they align this very well with our schedule, We're, with <laughs> my schedule of I go live on Thursdays. Yeah. And Issa from ConvertKit during the challenge in April for the ConvertKit challenge, she's gonna go live um, every Wednesday yeah. at two o'clock. Yeah, every so, single yeah. Wednesday. So she'll, She'll be, it's a whole hour and it's live with yeah. live chat. How cool is that? And it, it's going to be really interactive. Yeah. It's going to be fun. So you can learn from Issa on Wednesday and then from me on Thursday. And you can really like just take your blog and lift it up mm -hmm. and build your email list. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Some amazing, actionable, free advice out mm -hmm. there and free like live support mm -hmm. to help you guys grow your blogs. Yeah. That's the big thing too that we realized with, with this challenge and the reason that we wanted to do five big live trainings throughout wow. throughout the 30 days was having that live help and having someone answer your questions live yeah. is really helpful, especially for you know early creators who are just kind of getting the foundations of their business and blog built. That's why why we exist, you know. Like our ConvertKit's motto is to help creators earn a living, and so we wanna we wanna get that audience built so that you have um, friends to sell things to. <laughs> to, help. to help. To help. Yes. All right, so that is the three secrets, collaboration, consistency, and challenging yourself. Mm -hmm. So awesome that you guys have that. Um, the challenge starts April 1st. There is a link to it. Now we'll go into some Q&A, because mm -hmm. we have Alexis here, and she is free and open to answer your questions. Yes. Um, and I'll drop the link again, just in case it kind of went up. And we'll go Ooh, through. You got some good podcast. Yes. You got some really good podcast suggestions here. Cool. Okay, so what people do is they put question and then they put the question. So look for the word question. Okay. Oh, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Um, 15 a day. Good stuff. Okay. Maybe you guys were just chatting with us. Um, is a list really still necessary these days? Has it not moved to social media? Ooh, yeah. good one for you. That's a great question. Um, Angela Lee. So this is a question that we get a lot, especially in the world of social media. Everyone has social accounts and you can easily build an audience on there without, there's very little, um, there's no barrier to entry. Yeah. So if I want to go and, and stumble upon Susie's page, I can follow her. Um, however, with the Instagram algorithms, right now about 3% of your audience actually sees your content. So you're producing pictures and writing captions for 3% of your audience at times. Yeah. And so that engagement is very low. Whereas an email industry average open rates are around 20 to 30%. Yeah. And so that engagement is there. Another thing I really want to touch on is if you are pouring money and time and energy into building a business, please make sure that it's that you're building it on something that you own. Yeah. So you own your website. You're building a blog on something that That's you own. That's why blogging is you, important. Yes, yeah, it really is. You control the content. You control the fact that you own that URL. No one can take that away from you. Whereas I've seen a lot of people, and, and honestly personal friends of mine, who have built really big audiences on social, 
but as the algorithm has really impacted engagement, their their businesses are actually being greatly yeah. affected because they they don't own any any of that technology, and so they're moving over to email because they own the email list. Yeah. They own the contacts, and so being able to to facilitate and communicate one to many in a controlled environment that you own is important. It is. Yeah. Very important. And it's more reliable. Yeah. You know, like Instagram went down last week for almost 36 hours. And I know that that's... Facebook was... Gl- oh, yeah. It was the same thing that Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram. Yeah. It glitched. Right. And it so... Was terrible. What if one day <laughs> Instagram gets sold again or, you know, Facebook so- sells it or... Yeah. Or they decide, hey, you're going to have to only pay ads because Facebook, I'm sure you guys have seen has moved into an ad. Pay to play. Yeah, you gotta and pay so to play. And so is Pinterest. And so is Pinterest, and, yeah. and so is Instagram. Yeah. So if you want engagement, you're gonna have to pay for it. So that's kind of my, and I know that sounds really biased, but I like to think of things very logically, and I'm like, where do I have control? I have control of my email list. I have control over yeah. being able to communicate with them when I choose, and it's not going away. Right. So, yeah. I hope that answers your question, Angela. No, that's perfect. <laughs> like, if you think about it, sorry, I just made a thought. Yeah. I made a thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, if, like, Facebook, you have to pay to reach an audience, right? Mm-hmm. And Instagram, you have to pay to reach an audience because of right. ads. Like, if you think about your ConvertKit account, yes, you have to pay mm-hmm. to manage your emails. Yeah. But it's a marketing. Like, mm-hmm. we, yeah, it's your marketing department. That's mm-hmm. what ConvertKit is for you. Mm-hmm. Um, the automations and the sequences that I have in ConvertKit, I set them up once. Mm-hmm. It's like training a little sales team. And then these little sales guys, like my little emails, go out and do all the work for me, and the automation just runs. Mm. So yes, I pay per month to have ConvertKit help me, but they're my marketing department. So it's a business. I love that. Yeah. That's a really good analogy. I need it. I'm going to share that with my marketing team. Well, thank you. That's a really great... That was a good thought. That's a good thought. <laughs> I'm glad you made that thought. <laughs> I made that thought. <laughs> it's a good mom moment. <laughs> All right. Okay, more questions. Um, yeah, Stephanie, there's a link for the ConvertKit challenge. Um, Cool, I like that. Thanks, Jessica. Oh, Jenny, I'm so glad that you just finished your first landing page. Yay, congrats, Jenny. That's exciting. Totally amazing. Thank you, Shayna. Oh, people are signing up for the challenge, too. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah. Because it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Oh, Lisa, um, if you missed the first point, it was about collaboration and the importance of finding creators who are kind of at your same your same level as far as the experience, maybe, or where you are in your business journey yeah. and collaborating with them. So if you have a whole th- whole um, whole 30 whole 30 you just started whole 30, whole 30 <laughs> so if, if you have a whole 30 blogger hence the then, water and no more diet coke yeah my mom would be so proud of me <laughs> um if you had a whole 30 blogger and then someone who was blogging about um i don't know specific recipes that are gluten-free doing Ooh, yeah. doing a because you know being on whole 30 is gluten-free you can collaborate and do guest posts or do it live together just how can you get in front of someone else's audience and how can you get them in front of yours yeah, yeah. awesome yeah and then this live will be on the page right so if you miss anything you can go watch the replay too mm-hmm. so Perfect. they will see you forever on my page what does it mean by 30-day trial so the um because it ends at the end of April. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to start your trial now with ConvertKit, the the trial doesn't actually end until April 30th. So you technically have a little bit more than 30 days. Right. It's like 30, what is it? Well, I guess now it would be like, yeah, 38 yeah. days. Um, because we wanted people, we wanted to give people a free challenge, completely free. So the content's free, and then being able to, yeah. to uh, use ConvertKit as a tool during the challenge is free until April 30th. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And you're going to have five one-hour lessons with Isa. Like, she's super smart. She's yeah. worked with amazing people, mm-hmm. just like Alexis, yeah. on building their email list. So mm-hmm. really sign up for it just to get the free content. You don't even have to stick with ConvertKit. Yeah. Just go get the free content. Absolutely. Stephanie asked... Um, Isa will be live on Facebook or their site or other. Great question. So there, once you sign up for the challenge and you get your free trial, or if you're already a customer, you'll be emailed. We're going to send you an email that will have the links to all of the live trainings. And then there's also this really cool thing called the Challenge Hub. Ooh. And it's a hub of all the resources in one place. So Ooh. that you'll also be able to watch all the recordings on there too. So you'll have access to... After, even after the challenge? Um, not... Um, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. 
I think so. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to get back Maybe, to you guys on like, that. Most of the time they close it after Yeah, college. I think it closes on the 30th. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be there. You do have to be there. But maybe. <laughs> We're talking through this. <laughs> maybe they'll keep it open. We'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Oh, cool. Oh, she asked us what the prizes Thank were. you, nah. Okay, Brooke. Missing the second part. Okay. Can you go over that again? Consistency, Brooke. That's the second one. Yes. Staying consistent. Mm-hmm. Building habits. Building, one. Yeah, building habits that allow you to be consistent. So we so, talked about a writing challenge, or sorry, a writing habit of writing 50 words a day that'll like, work up that habit so that you can write emails better. How do you track you can, your habits? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I, there's a lot of different habit tracker tools, but I use an app on my phone called... Is it free? It is free. It's free. It's a free app. Mm-hmm. We it's love free. free app. Um, you can track up to three habits for free. Okay. And if you want to track more... You have to pay. Uh, But it's a (laughs) one-time fee, so that's nice. It's an app called Done, and I don't know if you can see this. Yes, you can see see this. Okay, so I have – those are my habits that I track in my personal life. These are not business habits. Um, But you're able to mark them down each day, and it makes a cool little vibration and a cool little noise when you hit it, too. Nice. So that's satisfying. I almost (laughs) wanted to hit one of yours. You just hit it. So you can, like, feel it vibrate. Oh, never mind. It's okay. (laughs) Didn't Um, do it. But yeah, done is a really great habit tracker. So love it. Highly recommend. Okay, here's one from Na. Could convert kid keep in touch? Help me design things like marketing media. Like does um maybe social media graphics or or yeah is that what you're asking Nana? Potentially design maybe probably. Um, I use a free tool called Canva. Canva is awesome. Yeah, C A N V A, and it's a free tool, and you can use all of those images and you can put them inside of ConvertKit emails, inside of ConvertKit um, sequences if you're doing a, a email challenge or an email course. So I use Canva. It's free. I like that. Yeah. Canva's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jacqueline says how, because she, she blogs about um, mom's healthy meals. Okay. Um, how to get your ideal audience and not only other bloggers. So the mm-hmm. problem that people run into, they go into Facebook groups, mm-hmm. they promote something and like, they're all bloggers on these Facebook groups. So right. we're just bloggers signing up to other bloggers. Ah. So how, how does she get real moms that aren't bloggers mm. to sign up to her list? Because sometimes we, we run into these same communities on Facebook and yeah. we're just all in the same world. So how do mm-hmm. I get reach out of that? Yeah, I would say if, you, if you're finding that you're attracting an audience that is bloggers and they're, they're not your ideal yeah. customer or your ideal friend or um, – I would get outside of Facebook groups. Yeah. Like I would get outside of Facebook groups and find out where do your moms or your ideal audience hang out? Like, where are they? If they're, if they're on Facebook, maybe they're in mom Facebook groups, but they're not in mommy blogger Facebook groups. There's a big difference. Yeah. So how are you able to get in a, in a Facebook group or in, in a community that is not just inundated with other bloggers? Right. Right. Um, And then I also think Pinterest is also a really great way to attract, to attract that, that as well. Do you have any tips for that? Um, yeah, I love the thing about like not going to blogging Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, so Jacqueline, maybe something like I just joined. So um, on this kick, the whole thirty Facebook group. Mm-hmm. I think there's like sixty thousand people in oh, that group. Whoa. So obviously you're not allowed to go like self promo on there, but at least you can go start asking people like, what kind of recipes do you like? Mm-hmm. Um, do you like this ingredient or not? So joining kind of the the food groups yeah that aren't food blogger groups because there's a difference too yes so that's a really good point yeah join Mm -hmm. the food groups not the food blogger groups Mm -hmm. yeah otherwise we're all just kind of talking to each other exactly (laughs) and they're probably not gonna buy anything right all each other's products like i have an ebook well i have an ebook too on that (laughs) Um, yeah okay okay brooke likes this (laughs) okay um nah says question would being a podcast guest help build your list? If so, how would oh, it really? For, sh- for yeah. sure. Tell me. Yeah. How does that work? Oh, um, being yeah. a podcast guest. So one. the first thing I would do is, and I had a podcast for th- almost three years. So like this is coming from being a podcaster, how I would be pitched. Um, so if you were to pitch. Uh, if, let's, yeah. Tell me about how right, you want to be pitched. Right. Um, okay. So for instance, if you were to go on iTunes or any kind of podcast player that you're listening and consuming podcasts on and search keywords that align with your content, your offering, your, your blog. So my podcast was called The Laptop Lifestyle and it's still up if you wanna to listen to it, shameless plug. Um, but I was looking for 
virtual entrepreneurs, people that were living a laptop lifestyle. So people were finding me through those keywords. And so um, if you were to make a list of, let's say, 20 podcasts that sparked your interest, I would look at if they have reviews, I would look at if they have how many episodes they have, Mm -hmm. because it shows the consistency there. If if their audience is fresh and they're they're consistently listening to that podcast. So don't pitch to a podcast that isn't active. Um, And then I would get pitches and um, it was was, the ones that that really sparked me the most was they had listened to at least one episode and they could point to a specific thing that we talked about. Good. I'm like, oh, you actually took the time to listen to the show. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Like you're not just, this isn't a cold pitch. It's personal. Like that. And honestly, this pitching little question I'm answering could really apply to anything. Yes. Like this can be uh, when it comes to pitching to brands, anything like that. So it has some sort of personal touch. Um, they're very clear on what they want to talk to my audience about. So they'll say, okay, I've got four key talking points I want to mention. So that's also really important. Yeah. So if you, let's say you were to go to Google Analytics or your WordPress analytics and you were to see your top three blog posts that have the most traffic, those are great talking points on a podcast. Yeah. Because you're seeing that people are already reading, they're already interested in that content. So you could um, talk to the podcast guest, of, or sorry, to the podcast host about that, and then um, how they can get a hold of you, when, when you're available, and getting that next Just like step. It's super easy for them. Like right. you do all the hard work for them. Yeah, and even if you if you're to the level where you would have a media kit too, that's great. Mm. Even if it's a one sheet with like your profile, your social media links. And a little bio about you. Yeah, that's that's great. And you can make that in Canva. You can make it in. You can send them a Word document. Honestly, can it be a web page? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It can be a web page. Because my well. media kit is a web page. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it's easy for me just to update it, and mm-hmm. I just send them the U- the URL for sure. So if one of the things that you want to talk to them about, let's say you are, we're just talking about Whole Thirty. So let's just continue <laughs> on the Whole Thirty example train. Um, let's say for example, um, you were pitching a podcast about healthy eating. And you had a really helpful habit tracker for Whole30, let's say. Ooh. And it was a free tool that you wanted to offer. Yeah. You could put that in the pitch and say, hey, and also I have a free a free habit tracker right. for tracking Whole30 calories or whatever. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> but that way they know that you have something to offer the audience. And that's how you can really build, um, you can build your list being a guest on a podcast. I like that. Yeah. That's super smart. Yeah. Yeah. I might do that. I might steal that tip. I think you should. (laughs) Denise says, I did the 30-day trial but never got a chance to use ConvertKit. Is there a way to do the trial again? So a little life hack. Um, Denise, you can just sign up with a different email address. And this is straight from the affiliate manager, so. I'm just saying, like, (laughs) if if you want the trial again and you want to do the challenge, the the ConvertKit landing page challenge, you could also – take up the trial again and by signing up with a different email address. I like it. Yeah. Super smart. Uh, Shara says, feedback on Meet Edgar. Gosh. Have you used it? I, I like Meet Edgar. We use Meet Edgar. I haven't it's used a social, it. It's a social media planner. It's like Hootsuite? And it's like Hootsuite, and you're also able to repurpose some of your past posts. Okay. Which is really helpful. I'm a fan. I haven't used it. I don't I don't use it personally. I know that um, we've used it in the past for ConvertKit, so I don't have... I don't have a ton of, um, of personal experience using the tool, but I know their CEO, Laura Roder, and some of their team, and they're awesome. You know everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kathy says, I'm really struggling to start a blog, feeling overwhelmed on WordPress. I'm going to check out ConvertKit. I love the idea to just write 50 to 100 words a day. Mm. What would you say is the best starting point before launching a blog? So, Kathy, one of the easiest things, especially with ConvertKit, and you can do this, and you can sign up now, and... You can do this all for free, so you don't have to like put any money down. Mm-hmm. You can start with, with ConvertKit and watch the live that I did yesterday mm. where I show you step-by-step how to create a landing page in ConvertKit so you can have a landing page up with even just your idea for a blog, yeah. right? Yeah. And it could even be a landing page where like, if you're interested in following me in my blog, then this is what I'm going to blog about. Sign up here to get notified when the blog goes live. Mm-hmm. So. It's not the best solution because you're not offering them anything, right. but at least it is a way to verify kind of um, your idea and your blogging idea. Yeah, I think validating your ideas before you start a blog yeah. is really helpful. Super smart. Um, so there's something at ConvertKit that we teach a lot in like our beginner blogging kind of webinars. It's called the 10-person rule. Are you familiar with this rule? 
I feel like maybe... I think, yeah. I've heard yeah. it in a webinar, yeah. Yeah, so it's called the 10-person rule, and really what it is is you're, you're doing a little bit of one-to-one. So let's say friends on Facebook, you're sending them a message, or you're sending someone a personal email saying, hey, I'm starting a blog about X. Yes. Would you be interested in being on my email list for updates? And if they say yes, you at, if you're using Facebook, you ask for their email address, or if you already have their email address... You could say, is it okay if I were to add you to my email list? Yeah. And that's a great way to kind of build that smaller audience just to get, kind of get it started. Yeah. Get it off the ground. Yeah. There's something about logging into your account, your ConvertKit account, and seeing 10 people there. Seeing people there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, these people, heck, even if it's your aunt, you hey, know? Or like, in the beginning, the way I got traffic to my blog was by asking my mom to share my post on her Facebook page. See? My mom was my biggest source of traffic yeah. when I just started. That's amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that the 10 person rule is really great when you're just getting started. And also, you can even ask for feedback. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I'm thinking about starting a blog about X. Would you be interested in signing up? If not, or if yes, I would love to hear your feedback on, on what you think about this blog idea. Yeah. You know, and getting those ideas flowing. Yeah. I think a lot of times when you have something that you're so passionate about and you're so excited about, you want to like hold it really close to you. Because you're you scared. Because you're scared. Yeah. yeah, you're scared that you're going to be rejected or you're scared that no one is going to want it or or you're scared that, you know, you're supposed to be the expert. Yeah. And so you can't ask for help or you can't ask for feedback. And I've seen some of the most successful entrepreneurs and creators because they have such a open open feedback loop. Yeah. You know, they're always open to feedback. Right. And so I think that if you open yourself up to that, especially... That's why they're successful, because they're they're open to feedback, they're taking that feedback and mm-hmm. improving their idea. Right. And instead of launching something that might nobody might like. Yeah. 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 Super smart. Yeah. So that, that's a little bit of feedback there. Uh, more questions. Okay. Isadora kinda... says, I've just started with this blogging thing. Where should I start traffic-wise? I'm on social media and trying to build my list. Um... Am I in the right way? What else should I be doing? So Isadora, you can definitely do like, you can create a Pinterest pin and Mm -hmm. directly drive that to the landing page or the opt-in page. That really helps. Um, You can do collaborations, kind of what we touched on earlier. Any other tips? I would say like what what we talked about earlier and then also traffic wise, I mean, it's gonna help if you have a landing page, like especially if you're just starting from nothing. Yeah. yeah, I would also try the 10 person rule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Friends and family, it's okay. Like you're starting a new business, you're right. starting a blog. Right. It's all right. It's okay to put yourself out there mm-hmm. and give yourself time. Yeah. And give yourself time to really to do it. Yeah. And not expect that you're going to grow to 1000 subscribers overnight. Cuz it's a slow process sometimes. It is. Yeah. I love this next question. This um, one. Ellie? L asked, "I have a fear of collaboration." I think I'm afraid of rejection. How do I get over this? I'd love to work with someone and help them grow too. Ooh. Yeah, I love this question. Yeah. Um, we were talking earlier whenever we were at lunch about like comparison and how it's easy to, to look at other people online and, and you compare your story to their story or you're like, oh, I wish I could work with them and it, or you're scared to ask because you're afraid of, of hearing no. Um, I will tell you though that some of the best breakthroughs for my life and my creative journey have been because of a no. Yeah. And I think hearing people say no and, and getting rejected, it, it's, it strengthens you in a way that allows you to keep pursuing and keep persevering and pushing through. Mm. Um, and then also, um, if you were to find a list of like 20 people that you might be interested in working with, send out 20 pitches and if one person says yes, boom. Boom, a yeah. door opens right. and you can go through that door and can right. move forward. Right, I actually have a story about this. Whenever I started travel blogging, like almost four years ago, I wanted to do my first travel blogging trip to Seattle. And my goal was I don't want to have to pay for anything that I do. Right. That's a good goal. I I don't want to have to, I'll pay for flights and like some food, but I'd like all my accommodations to be taken care of. So cool. Um, Because I was going to write this big blog post and I was going to drive all this traffic to it. And this was whenever reviews and city guides were really becoming popular. And so um, I went on to Airbnb and I pitched 75 individual pitches wow. and I sent 75 individual pitches to Airbnb hosts and all I needed was four nights covered yeah and I got four yeses awesome I got 71 no's but, but, you but, four but, yeses. but all I cared about was that four yes yeah. so if you're looking to work with one person or collaborate with one person just be willing to send out 
kind right? of a lot of invites and a lot of pitches. So over seventy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that that's that's consistent hard work, guys. That's awesome. But I was able and then it happened. Yeah. You know, and they were really happy. We took really great so the pitch was if we can stay the night in your Airbnb yeah. for free, we'll list you on the guide and we'll take new photos for your Airbnb oh my listing. Gosh. I would say yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we got that, but yeah. That's I love <laughs> little that. side story. That is so cool. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, please post the link to the challenge again. Okay, Melissa says, please start podcasting, Susie. Oh, you guys are awesome. Maybe I'll add that to my to my list now that John's home. He's wonderful. Okay, Katie says, can you talk about the ConvertKit approval process? Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm hesitant to officially launch my site until I have a good number of posts, so I have a coming soon page until I'm open to it all. I'm in the free trail period of ConvertKit now, and my account says it won't let me email until... My request approval. Yeah. So when it comes to getting your account approved, because spam is a thing mm -hmm. in the world that we live in, um, we approve, we manually approve every account wow. that is created inside of ConvertKit because we want to protect the creators that, yeah. that are using our platform and we don't just let in, in everyone in. And so in your case, um, I would say within like the next, probably the next day, um, that would be helpful. And also, Katie, if you email me at alexis at convertkit.com. You're giving your email address? Well, yeah, why not? Okay, awesome. What? Not everybody has it. Well, I mean, it's easy to figure out. Yeah, alexis at convertkit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Katie, if you email me alexis at convertkit.com and you let me know the email address that you signed up with at convertkit, I would be more than happy to just approve it, like, right as soon as I get your email. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, cool. Ra says, can, have you already discussed the comparison between ConvertKit and MailChimp? Yeah, great question. Um, if not, can you do that for us? Yeah. So a big, a big difference between MailChimp and ConvertKit is that there's a lot of differences. There are. Um, I think MailChimp is a good tool, especially when you're starting out. It's really hard to grow in and scale. Yeah. using ConvertKit, or sorry, using MailChimp, <laughs> using MailChimp because ConvertKit is a subscriber-centric platform, meaning that there's no duplicate subscribers. Yeah, and MailChimp, there are a lot of duplicate subscribers depending on where they opt in because each opt-in serves as a separate list. Yeah. And so you're not able to segment or you're, you're not able to really dig into who your audience is um, like you can with ConvertKit as well as the visual automations and the way that sequences and tagging works inside of ConvertKit. This might sound like too much, but there's there's a lot of just differences in the features and what you're able to accomplish. Um, yeah, I think MailChimp is a, is a decent place to start. It's not, I haven't seen too many creators grow, grow. really big. Yeah, okay. yeah, uh, and like be able to scale. Like I can and, run a small business off of ConvertKit. Right. And it could scale with me. Right. So, Roz, for you, I would suggest joining the challenge mm -hmm. in April with ConvertKit and yeah. testing it out, seeing yeah. if you like the tool and the platform, mm -hmm. seeing if you like their trainings. And if you don't like it, then you can go to something else. Yeah. But at least give them a month and... Check it out. Check it out. Yeah. It's free. Might yeah. as well. <laughs> Might as well. Like, yeah, that's why it's called a free trial. And you can always use the training for whatever other for platform sure. you want to use. For sure. Oh, cool. so many people are signing up for the Yeah, I'm at really least signed up. So cool. Um, oh, cool. Great. Thanks, Jenny. Okay, Holly says, I'm just starting out and I don't have any emails. Would I start with ConvertKit now without having any emails or wait until mm -hmm. I have something more established? Um, Holly, I would take the same advice. Approach, yeah. Yeah. Just take April. Like the next month because ConvertKit is having this challenge that I just found out about today, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Like <laughs> perfect. Like in line with we just did this and I psyched you guys up and I got you ready to work yeah. on your email list and now you can continue it with ConvertKit professional mm -hmm. trainings. Um, so I would take the month of April and really invest in learning ConvertKit and understanding how you can grow your email list and like consistently, consistently yeah, working on it. <laughs> and then after the month of April, then you can be more sure like, do you want to invest in ConvertKit or not? Mm -hmm. So that'll be a better um, time to make a decision. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Okay, hey. awesome. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Ooh, Kelly asked, 
can we join the challenge if we are already with ConvertKit? You can. Yes, I am. I'm going to. Yeah. You can absolutely join the challenge if you are with ConvertKit. And I think it's a great opportunity, too, for especially with those five trainings with ESA to really learn more about the tool and learn more about list building and learn more about um, how to build an opt-in. So you can absolutely do that. Super cool. Is the paid for Canva worth it? What is better about that? Do you use the transparent background? Um, no, I don't pay for Canva. I use the free Canva. I mm-hmm. guess like you have to pay for it to use a transparent background. So I, I only create pin images um, and, and plan planners or printables mm-hmm. or opt-ins on Canva. So I've never had to use the transparent background, so I don't pay for Canva. Do you? I used to pay for it. Oh, why? Yeah. I used to pay for it because you get access to different templates, mm. like different design templates. That's nice too, um, yeah. More design assets. And then you can use the transparent background, which Ooh. is really helpful for logos and like vector vector images. Yeah, and the same for PicMonkey. You have to pay for PicMonkey mm-hmm. to use transparent. So yeah. you have to pick a tool right. to at least pay somewhere. But what I will say is I stopped really using it. And so I went back to the free version and it still works really great. Yeah. So uh, I would save your money. I unless, use it for unless, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless you really need it. Yeah. But I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Yeah. I think PicMonkey has a seven day free trial. Where if you just need to go create a logo real quick, you can yeah. sign up for the seven-day free trial of PicMonkey. For sure. Create your logo and then cancel your account or at least stop it so they don't charge you. For sure. I created the, the my podcast thumbnail. Not the one that's on there right now, but the one that was on my podcast for almost two years. Mm-hmm. I created that with, with a Canva for free. And it worked great. Yeah. I think there's like this this stigma of like I got to hire a designer and I got to get a logo. And I don't like, even have a logo, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just just go on Canva. And I, there's a lot there, and it's a great resource, yeah. and it's free. So. I don't even have a logo, and I've been running this for the last couple of years. All I have <laughs> is my name and a pretty font. Whoop, so, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've thought about um, paying for like a super expensive branding company to help me come up with a whole big brand and overhaul, but yeah. um, mm-hmm. so far it's working. Yeah. If you guys have any ideas for logos, go ahead and send them to me. That'd be fun. Right. Look, we have 79 comments down here. 80. I know. We're never going to get through them. This is so fun. I, ne- I never get through them. This is so fun. I answer them later. I on. should just fly down to Florida <laughs> all the time. We just go live together. This is, right. This is great. I love my audience. They're, I love them, too. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Okay. Just join. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I started my own blog. I wondered if you had any discounts or coupons. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I actually do. Tammy, for blog by number... Right now, I do have a discount until the end of March because we're doing this challenge. Ooh. It's called um, March Blog. So type in that. You get 20% off, Tammy. Winning. Yeah. Go, Tammy. Yahoo! <laughs> Good job, Tammy, for asking. Oh, cool. Thank you, Katie. Awesome. Nana says, Pinterest tips. How do you make those awesome pins? Um, on Canva or PicMonkey or PowerPoint, depending on what mood I'm in, <laughs> um, I pick the different platform. Um, Canva is super simple. PicMonkey is super simple. They have already pre-made mm-hmm. templates for you. Um, overall advice for a Pinterest pin, um, three, two by three. So 600 by 900. Mm-hmm. That's the um, symmetry of it. Easy to read text. Don't get too fancy with fonts and cursive. Just super bold, easy to read. Mm-hmm. A nice image and high contrast. There you go. And then do multiple images. Like do two to three pin images per post Mm -hmm. and four landing pages. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing is working better with Pinterest right now is adding new content to Pinterest. I think all social media platforms want that, Mm -hmm. like Instagram with stories, they want new content. So creating new pins is gonna help you um, get more traffic. Yeah. Okay, Lisa says, I am with MailChimp right uh, right now, only 37 subscribers. Can I automatically transfer them to ConvertKit Mm -hmm. or do I have to manually input my list? Great question. You can easily export your subscribers from MailChimp to a CSV Mm -hmm. and then import all of them into ConvertKit in like a few clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Super simple. Mm -hmm. You can export and import. Yeah. And also, Lisa, if you go to the URL help.convertkit.com, that is our knowledge base, and there's a little search bar, and if you type in MailChimp, there's an article showing you exactly how to switch over. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. I, this has been done before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Nafri, Nafisha, Nafisha? Nafisha. Nafisha says, I'm always worried my readers will expect me to be an expert in my blog niche, mm-hmm. but I'm not. How do I manage this? Yeah, that's a great question. Do you want to answer it? You go first. Okay. I would say that I 
I have felt this even in my own creative journey of, of like imposter syndrome of not feeling like I have enough or know enough about a subject to really speak about it with authority. And I think that that is very normal, but also there is still a little bit about that subject that you know enough about that you could speak about. So even if let's say if you're talking in terms of percentages and the whole topic, knowing all of it would be a hundred percent. Even if you knew 5%, 10%. It's like me on Whole30. Yeah. I know six days of Whole30. Yeah. And I can't stop talking about it. Right. (laughs) So talk about what you know. And as you grow and as time goes on, you're going to learn more. And um, like a topic I'm super passionate about right now is vulnerability. And there's, I want to be able to speak about it and I want to talk about it more. But I don't know enough about it, so I'm reading books about it, too. So if there are resources or books that you can read about, too, in your topic to learn more, I think that will help you, um, one, know more about the, the subject so that you can talk about it kind of as an authority or, as you said, an expert, but also um, acknowledge that you won't. there will always be things that you oh, don't yeah. know. Oh, there yeah. will always be things that you don't know about a subject. There are things about email that I don't know, and I've you know been in email for years. So there will always be a little bit of something that you don't know, and that's okay. What about interviewing experts? Oh, that's a great idea. Right? Yeah. Like you're learning, you're giving advice to your audience, but you're also gaining advice. I love that. And giving them exposure, the expert, whoever's right. in that topic. Yeah. That's kind of how podcasting interviews start. kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Um, Tanya says, what are the current most popular ConvertKit templates of landing pages and forms? So we have three core forms that we've always had. The landing pages, this is... This is probably not um, what you want to know, uh, Tanya, but we launched them this week, so we don't know. We don't know. We don't don't know what the most popular are. I think I know what the most popular one is. Really? The one that Nathan picked. Oh, you think so? Yes. That's not my favorite, though. Really? Yeah. But I almost picked it, too. (laughs) So I'm like, I'm thinking there's something about that one. If you look at the video Mm -hmm. on the challenge page, there's a quick little video. And Mm -hmm. at the end, Nathan, the CEO of ConvertKit Talks, and he's actually showing you like a landing page that he picks, and I'm like, I would have picked that. So I'm thinking that one's going to be the most popular. You think so? Yeah. Well, the jury's out, Tanya. The jury's out. Um, we'll see. <laughs> there, are, there are like 18, 18 landing pages, and so we just launched them this past week, so we don't have enough data really to say that this one's the most popular. So sorry, I can't answer that yet. <laughs> um, Kenzie said, I heard once that um, – Something like in your first month make a dollar and ten subscribers, in your second month make five dollars and fifteen subscribers. What is a good standard of growth? I don't want to compare others to my success. I'd like to know a measuring guide of where I should be. Ooh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I have an industry number. There is an industry thing about uh, about this about some, the one somewhat in line with that where um you can make a dollar per subscriber mm. if you have a warm list and oh, a brand yeah. yeah i've heard that so say for example you have 500 people on your email list yeah and you're consistently giving them good content and good value you can expect to make around 500 dollars per month right yeah. right right yeah so, I, okay, I, I, have, heard that I have also heard that i did i've never heard of the one dollar to ten subscribers um and the second you, you know five dollars for 15 more subscribers like yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily know if, if I've never seen that growth chart. I guess before that would be like, cool it, to see that. That but, would be really cool. Yeah. Um, I would just say as long as you're consistently growing a couple subscribers a day, especially when you're just getting started, yeah. I think that's good. Like one to five a day. Oh yeah. If you're just getting started, that's, really that's like great. Like one a day. That's thirty per month yeah. or one hundred and fifty per month. Uh-huh. So one to five subscribers per day. Yeah, I think that's a great way to. It's really good growth. A good thing to to work towards. Yeah, yeah. That is super good. Allie growth. wants you to start a podcast. Somebody See? else wants me to start. See? Start one. Oh gosh. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um. Sasha says, what verbiage uh, would you use in a pitch? Okay, so you're pitching to somebody to be on their audience. Mm-hmm. What verbiage? Okay, what do you look for in the subject line mm. when somebody's pitching to you? I mean, I just because I'm on the business side, I like, I like subject lines that are very direct. Yeah. So it's like podcast interview request or podcast. Okay. Like something. Yeah, me too. I, I, know, I know that that's not very juicy. Do but, you want your name in it? Um, for Susie or for Alexis? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, like when people were pitching to be on my podcast, it was like, I would love the opportunity to, to be on your podcast. I would yeah. love to have a conversation with you, like those kind of things. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the verbiage in a pitch, 
I think that oftentimes when you're so focused on you building your business, it can sometimes be you forget. You forget that you're, especially when you're pitching to work with someone else, that it's about helping their business. Yes. How are you helping them, them grow? Because that's what they're focused on. Yes. When like, I, what's when, in it for me? Right. Whenever you read an email yeah. or a pitch, you're like, okay, where in this does it say that you're going to help me? Right. You know, not about how you need the help or whatever. Like you've you've got to change that verbiage to how how are you offering value or how is this mutually beneficial and like right. calling that out. Someone being like, I really want to get in front of virtual entrepreneurs because I have this really incredible way to build up, you know, better habits and productivity. Oh, great. I need help with that. My audience needs help with that. Yeah. So just calling it out and be very, being direct, right. but doing it in a way that, that highlights the value that you bring to a potential um, partnership, for sure. Love that. Love that. Um, you know, we're never going to get to all the comments because there's 95. <laughs> and I and I normally end these at an hour. No. Yeah. You want to stay here for two hours? No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe, do... maybe like maybe like fifteen more minutes. You want fifteen more minutes? Is that okay with you? I want a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like I can only, only hold. I'm a mom. I've had three kids. I can only hold it an okay. hour. That's pretty much why I end them at an hour. <laughs> All, right. All right. If you guys know, we can do a couple more. Okay. I'm good. I can I can hold. Oh, we're uh, color coordinated. <laughs> are we? Oh, you're yeah. white and black. Cool. April Lee says, um, "Do you have any information courses on advanced convergent practices? When to segment? Best practices? How to segment?" Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So April in list by number. Yes. Which is also on sale if you use the coupon code March List until the end of March. Mm -hmm. um, list by number does go into the more advanced features of convergent, mm -hmm. the segmentation and the automations. Yeah. And I actually have three sequences for you in list by number a mm -hmm. welcome sequence an education warm-up sequence and a sales sequence so you can just take those import those into your convert kit and already have the emails pre-written you just have to go fill in your words yeah okay so it sounds like you that's awesome um dan and wendy cole asked is the trial 30 days or 14 days i signed up but it says 14 days remaining so i think what might have happened um dan or wendy depending on who this is wendy. <laughs> okay it's wendy hi wendy um <laughs> I think that you might have signed up for the trial on our homepage. The homepage of ConvertKit does feature a 14-day trial, but the challenge features a 30-day trial. So, Wendy, I would email help at convertkit.com and let them know that you want the 30-day you want the 30-day trial associated with the challenge, and they'll be able to switch that over for you and extend the trial. Awesome! Yeah. Okay, Nana. Canvas should be free. There should be a free version of it. I will double check on the other side, but. There should be a free version. Yeah. Um, ooh, this one's good for you. Yeah. What's the differences between Drip and ConvertKit? I have not used Drip, so right. you're familiar, more familiar? Yeah, Roz. I would say a big difference is the pricing. Um, the pricing is is different, and, and Drip is higher priced significantly. Um, up to 1000 for them is $50, and up to 1000 for us is, is 30 Yeah. So the monthly price is different. Um, I would say probably the biggest difference, we're very similar in our feature set, the biggest difference would be probably the, the way that they use automations and the way that they are segmenting using custom fields and we segment uh, using tags. They use tags, but they really focus on custom fields. So if you are needing a really advanced automation tool and you need all these different certain kind of custom fields to segment your audience, then um, Drip w might be a, a good tool. But um, yeah, I, I don't like to like you know no they're, they're a yeah. great tool they're both amazing yeah they're tools. both great i would say drip is like a little bit more advanced mm -hmm. if you want if you have multiple products and you're a big company for bloggers convert it is it's great for like yeah. a, a person of one yes you know, like for me i say that we're we're great for solopreneurs it is because it allows right. you to get in there and it's once you understand a yeah. little bit more about email you can really get in it and do a lot mm -hmm. inside a convert kit um, without it being too too overwhelming or paying for a lot of features that you don't ever use right I think that's probably the biggest difference like that. yeah that's true yeah um, Nana just loves 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 you Nana's awesome <laughs> <laughs> I love, love, love you. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a couple comments above you. Um, Alexandra says, how can you upload a video to Pinterest? The same way that you do a regular pin image, um, you just go and click on create a new pin and you click on video. Mm -hmm. um, I've done it a couple of times. I, wa I want to try actually making a video with my phone that's vertical and then uploading that to Pinterest and seeing if it actually works better because it's more vertical, right? 
I like so that. So I'm going to try that. I like that. Um, yes, Shelly. Oh, read, thanks, Katie. I know. She's so sweet. And yes, Shelly, I've read Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. Brene Brown's like my spirit animal. Even awesome. Though, you know, she's like my soul sister. I love See? her. See? Um, okay, one more question, mm-hmm. and then I really have to go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> um, see? No, there are. Okay, here. Kenzie, is it an indicator or p- of poor quality content or a dud freebie if you're not getting new subscribers? I have n- good growth on page views, but tiny amounts of subscribers. It yeah. could be, Kenzie. Um, mm-hmm. Honestly, in the beginning, I tested out freebie after freebie after freebie, and some of them just wouldn't convert. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they were amazing. And then I made up this one freebie in one night while we were watching TV and I was just filling it out and that's the one freebie that just went bonkers. Hmm. Um, so definitely have that consistency and test out new ideas. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a it's a dud and maybe you just have to change some verbiage or maybe you have to try something different. Yeah, I would repeat exactly what yeah. you just said. And yeah. you told me something at lunch, like is it really in line with Oh, the yes, there? yes. So. Something when it comes to building a good opt-in is you could find a very high converting opt-in, but it's not directly correlated to whatever you might sell down the road. And so you're building an audience that probably won't be interested in what you might sell yeah. or what you might, um, you know, if you're an affiliate marketer or what you might promote. So if you could find or create an opt-in that you could see really directly aligning with your overall vision for your business, that can be really helpful too. Um, Sometimes we'll, we'll see creators who will find and create some of their best products because they they had an opt-in about that yeah. that people were really excited about, and they're like, oh, there's more here. Um, I always say give away, give away the what and charge for the how. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what is the what and what is the how of your business? Yeah. And so like that how would be the product um, or the, the product that you might promote if you're an affiliate marketer. And that what is that that opt-in? I love it. Yeah. Super smart. Yeah. So again, Alexis, tell us about the challenge for ConvertKit, and I'll drop the link again before we have to go. Yes. So Or I have to go. Convert <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we should go. Um, yeah. it is um, okay, so the convert kit landing page challenge runs from April first to April thirtieth. It is completely free. We are giving away some crazy prizes, um, up to five thousand dollars for if you are able to grow y- your email list for that landing page to over a um, hundred subscribers, which is pretty great. And do I apply? Do I? Can yeah. I apply? Yeah. So okay. you just have to grow to a hundred subscribers for that specific landing okay. page. Okay. Like that landing page has to gain over a hundred subscribers. Um, the tiers to win prizes are 10 subscribers, 25 subscribers, 50 subscribers, and 100 subscribers. So it's it's really attainable. Yeah. You know, it's it's a 30-day challenge showing you how to build and create an opt-in, how to build and create a landing page, and then promote that. There'll be five um, five live webinars or live oh, trainings love those. with Issa, who's our webinar um, our webinar producer. And I know that you guys have seen her with Susie before. And it's gonna be it's gonna be really great. I'm excited. And it's it's free to join the challenge. And you also get a 30 day trial of ConvertKit that expires on April 30th. So technically, you get like 38 days. If you sign up today, right, right, right. you get until the end of April. So it gives yes. you a chance to like test out ConvertKit, mm-hmm. see if it's right for you. You're gonna yeah. get a ton of amazing training. And then at the end of April, if you don't like ConvertKit, you're like, this is not for me, then mm-hmm. you go to something else. Yeah. But at least take this month and see if this is the right tool for you. Right. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for being here, Alexis. You're welcome. I yeah. just love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys all for signing on. This has yeah, been thanks. awesome. We love you guys. We're here to help you. And I'll see you again next week during my lives. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. This has been so fun. You guys are so engaged. And uh, just keep on following my girl Susie here. <laughs> she knows what's up. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.